let's now look at the concept of what is referred to as the Venn diagram. Now, the name Venn, it's from a mathematician, Joseph Venn. So, Venn is always written using an uppercase V, all right? Now, this is generally where a rectangle represents the universal set. That means the set that contains all elements and all other sets, which are subsets of it, such as a school. And then circles represent the subsets. For example, the second form and the fifth form, those are subsets of the entire school. All right? Or it could be students studying English literature and students studying mathematics. And we're going to look at various concepts and definitions regarding the use of the, uni the um, Venn diagram. Now, this is our universal set. This is the Venn diagram. And uh, this is generally represented by the letter U for universal set. So, let me put U for the universal set. Now, within the universal set, for example, the universal set is the entire school. There are some students who, or it could be, for example, the universal set is the fifth form. Let's say the universal set is the fifth form. And then those who will be taking English literature, those who will be taking English literature, let's call it L, these are students who are taking English literature and within the set they are within the set L and L is a subset of the universal set that means those students will be sitting literature in the next exam they are in fifth form right now let's say we have student A student B student C student student D student E uh, let's put D and E down here. This is student D, this is student E. We have what is called a complement. The complement is can be written as L and that means L complement. L complement means those that are not in L. The complement of a set is the set of all elements in the universal set but are not in that particular set. So L complement is equal to and the students in L complement are D and E. Students D and E are in L complement. That means outside of L. All right? Now, suppose you have two sets. Let's say those who are studying history. You may have F and G. Now, as you see, H means history. L complement now consists of D, E, F, G. Alright? Now, there are no students who will be studying literature and at the same time will also be studying history. So, in this case, you have no 
elements in common between L and H. Alright? Now, if you want to find out which elements are in both L and H at the same time, you would say L intersect H. And here, what would it represent? It should represent the null set. Okay. L intersect H. Represent the null set. This symbol for intersection looks like N. And you can say I N. N for intersection. Intersect. Intermean between two. Between the two. And there is none. Here. Alright. Now. Let me get rid of H and imagine that we have students who are studying history and they are also stud no they are studying literature and they are also studying mathematics. Alright. Let me put C further down. C let me put C here because we're going to use this space here. Let us say this set M you would draw um, circles here preferably well if you can perfect looking circles although my circles don't look quite perfect at this point but let's say F is doing mathematics but will not be doing literature. F would be here. G is doing both mathematics and literature and H is also doing both mathematics and literature. Then we can make a little adjustment. Here we have L and M now. We say L intersect M. So L intersect M is equal to those students who are in L and M at the same time. That means those students who attend the literature class and then they attend the mathematics class. So they're doing literature and mathematics at the same time. Who are they? They are G and H okay G and H so the intersection of these two set consists of this area here L intersect F no L intersect M L intersect M that's the intersection okay no that's intersection There's something else that's referred to as union. Now, if you want to find out what is L, union M, you remember the sign that you use? It looks like U. U for union. Alright? Now, L union M, it means those are in L alone or L only. Those are in M only as well. Plus those are in both L and M. So the union consists of L only, which is over this side. M only, which is over this side. As well as both L and M, which is within this area. Alright? So that is L union M. Let me make a little adjustment here. And I will draw, I will redraw the circles L and M. Okay. Now I want a little more space between 
Nice. Let us see. Students doing literature. A is doing literature but not doing mathematics. B is doing literature but not doing mathematics. C is doing both literature and mathematics. D is doing both literature and mathematics. E is doing mathematics but not literature. F doing maths but not literature. And G is doing maths but not literature. We could say H is neither doing maths nor literature. So what is the union of L and M? L union M. It contains those in L only. So you have A, you have B, those in both L and M, you have C, you have D, which is here, as well as those in M only. M only is over here. So E and F and G. So those are L union M. And based on what I did earlier, L intersect M. I changed a bit, so we have a new L intersect M. C and D. So C, C is in both L and M class. And D attends both the literature L and the maths M class. So D is there as well. So this is C and D are in L intersect M. So they are doing both mathematics and literature. Okay. So here, what about H? What would you say about H? What would H fall into? Now you notice H is not in L nor in M at all. So what you would say is that L union M complement. That means outside of L union M. It is not in L only, it is not in M only, it is not in both L and M, it is outside. So H is in L union M complement. That means it is not in the union of L and M. Okay? So you see that. Now Let's do a few other things here. Let me get rid of this. I need this space. And this too. I'll just erase these for now. Suppose this is what I want to know. At this point, I have L union M let me put it up here let's put it further up here I want to know what is L union M complement what is that let's see you have L union M Alright, but first of all, we want to find out what is in L. If you are asked to do this, first of all, find out what is in L. L consists of A, B, don't forget the C and D because they are also in the L class. They are doing literature, alright? What about M? You see M, but what are the things in M complement? M complement consists of those outside of M. So here, A is not in M and B is not in M. 
but H is also not in M. Now, union it means what are in one or the other or both. So we can write N L union M complement is equal to. <coughs> we have A, we have B, we have C, we have D, and we have H. Okay? So all of these, remember curly brackets, all of these are in L union M complement. Because in L you have A, B, C, D. Good. A, B, C, and D. Then, within M complement, you have A, B, and H. That means not in M. The union means what is in one alone, or the other alone, or both. Okay? Now, I want you to do this for me. What is L intersect M complement? Remember, it's not L union M. It's not L intersect M and all of that complement. It's L intersect M alone complement. L is not complemented, but M alone. So, do this and uh, pause the video and write down the elements and then let me see what you have. Okay. So, let's see what's going on. L intersect M complement they must be in L and at the same time must also be in M complement so we already have L up here and we already have M complement here so what are the elements in both at the same time alright so let's see we have A we have B, well C is here but not here, D is in L but not in M complement, H is in M complement but not in L complement, so it seems like that's it. So what we have are A and B, good, that is L intersect M complement, it's A and B. You see that? <coughs> now, we'll break at this point and come back later to continue with some more.